Hello and welcome back to a, another Let's Play Planet Zoo. My name is Chris, and this is episode 18 of Percy's Zoo. In this episode, we start work on our doll sheep enclosure. Uh, we start work here by creating the uh, landslide that I had talked about in, I believe it is episode 16, 15 maybe? Um... Anyway, whenever we were working on the Timberwolf enclosure, uh, talked about creating a, a landslide as the natural barrier between the uh, Timberwolves and the Doll Sheep. So just kind of starting work on that. So there's going to be a large kind of rock formation here. And you notice there's not a whole lot of uh, pattern or structure to it. It's just rocks kind of plop down here and there. Again, that's kind of what you would see in a in a landslide uh, environment that there'd just be a whole bunch of rocks dumped out, um, all different sizes, uh, just kind of scattered here and there, probably all different types as well. So, so yeah, that'll be our our natural barrier. Uh, we have to make it kind of steep, kind of kind of rugged because obviously the uh, the doll sheep don't mind the cliffs. Um, this will easily keep the timber wolves out. But uh, I have to make sure we can keep the, the doll sheep from wandering over into the timber wolf uh, enclosure as well. So, start off here using all of the, uh, I believe it, yeah, the temperate rocks. And then we kind of mix in a couple of the uh, tundra, tundra rocks. And yeah, obviously, throw down a whole bunch of like broken trees and stuff that would have come down with this rock slide as well um, not just the rocks themselves you know and again just trying to make it as much of a natural barrier as, as possible so you know we're going to start throwing in some of these uh tundra rocks as well to make it look like these rocks came from higher up on the mountain you know they're they're uh, from a different either level of the rock face I, I mean again you can see it from looking down you, you see the transition from these temperate rocks to these tundra rocks uh, so it kind of creates like a visual cue that ah oh, these rocks came from up above and it, it kind of blends the two, since right here we do have kind of a transition point. Because we're going to be moving more into a tundra environment, and then more towards like an arctic environment. So, creating a nice gradient, almost, um, the transition between these two zones and these two... Uh, exhibits as we kind of again walk around our mountain so we're going to have our kind of more temperate mountain moving into a tundra mountain and then finally moving into more of an arctic mountain um, right here i'm just kind of dumping down some dirt pieces to still kind of sell the illusion that this was a this was a rock slide so there's a lot of loose material kind of sitting on top of these rocks still creating a nice gradient where you have the uh, the tundra rocks kind of mingling in with the temperate rocks. So now we're going to actually start on the cliff face here for the, uh, for the doll sheep. Now I had the idea that there would be this large kind of uh, cliff which would be the main feature of this exhibit and I wanted to make sure that the doll sheep could kind of walk on this cliff so there's going to be a couple of flat spaces uh, that will be viewable from the from the pathway below that you're looking into the doll sheep exhibit um, so that the doll sheep can kind of walk on that and you can kind of see them walking around on the cliffs because uh, again these guys don't mind the, the steeper high altitudes, you know, they're built for that. So I wanted to make sure to highlight that in this exhibit. So yeah, 
this is our first kind of rocky uh, cliff area that, I, that the doll sheep would be able to walk on. Now, I think I had to tweak it a few times. I think I made it a little bit too narrow. I didn't really quite know what their uh, pathfinding was going to be like. When I first started dropping it, you, know, you saw me just kind of pull it out a little bit further there. But that's kind of what I'm going for is to have these kind of cliff faces where they can walk on. And then, yeah, just making this like a nice uh, looking cliff face. You know, lots of striations, lots of uh, kind of detail here in the rocks. To kind of sell the illusion that this is this is in fact a cliff, you know. Though I don't know what you would mistake it as, honestly. But <laughs> that there looks like a plane to me. <laughs> you sure that's not supposed to be next door with the bison? <laughs> But yeah, anyway, uh, that, that's the kind of dominant feature that I did want in this exhibit. Eventually I do poke a hole in it to create a hard shelter uh, for the for the sheep. You know, kind of create a little cave that they can go into and it, it, would, it would have their bedding in it and everything. I hide that behind some trees so you don't really even see that cave from the, uh, from the path. steeper grade here on the um, on the mountain you just let me do that and that's to for one you know it'll illustrate that these guys climb on steep environments and the other point of it is to uh, make sure that you can kind of see them uh, see the see the sheep from So if you have a sloping up environment like that, you know, you'd be able to see them a little better. So just kind of placing down a temporary barrier here so that we can drop our, uh, drop our sheep in. Then again, get a better idea of what they're pathfinding is like and their needs for this uh, for this um, for this enclosure I was having some trouble with the uh, habitat gate here trying to get the path out but we get it out in, in the end again this is kind of the fun thing for <laughs> for these uh, water volumes you, you don't really uh, have the option or opportunity to modify them like we did before. since they can have a herd size of up to like 30. Um, so I wanted to have plenty of sheep initially. I sent some of the, uh, the smaller ones back. <laughs> because, you know, who, who wants a little itty bitty sheep? There was one I did get with like 0% 0 uh, Zero percent size that I decided to keep because he was so cute. He was itty bitty compared to the other ones. Um, 
But yeah, anyway, you know, immediately see after I drop these sheep, like, oh my gosh, they're like little four by fours. Um, they can they, they can climb anything. So, so yeah, immediately have to go through and, and make some bigger walls and stuff that they can't jump over. Um, but anyway, this is why you want to do this kind of early on, so you don't get too far along in your design and then go, oh my gosh, it's not going to work. <laughs> these, these sheep are Spider-Man. <laughs> And yeah, just kind of fixing the temporary barrier here so that um, the sheep don't escape and we can kind of work on the on the exhibit here without worrying too much about about losing some sheep. You know, don't want those a dangerous animal has escape notifications coming up every every five minutes. Now I'm trying to get the uh, cliff face here to work so that they can actually walk on it. I'm just kind of bringing the cliff uh, around to kind of meet up with the mountain here. Again, trying to match the striations so that all the lines kind of flow into each other rather than, it, you know, look haphazard and random. <laughs> rather than make it look like something I built. Um... <laughs> <laughs> make it look, you know, good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I was probably looking up cliffs at this time. So, anytime you see me pause like that, I'm probably looking something up on the internet. You know, either pictures or um, information about whatever it is I'm trying to do. One thing that's really helped me <clears throat> build better in the uh, Planet series is... Um, <laughs> it always sounds like an awkward word whenever you like plural series. Um, but anyway, yeah, something that, that helped me get better is, is to look up uh, kind of like reference pictures, you know. Uh, for example, like to make a cliff face like this, you know, a quick image search of you know doll sheep habitat and combine that with you know rocky mountain river cliff um, you know just kind of these little things I'm trying to emulate and then kind of pick a couple pictures and go that's a good idea let's let's try that and let's try to make that over and what does a what does a rock slide look like you know there's a bunch of little tiny boulders usually on the top and um, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here is just dropping down a whole bunch of little boulders again because it's a rock slide it hasn't had time to uh, erode yet so you're going to have a bunch of things just kind of loosely s sitting on top um, you're also going to have a whole bunch of you know mud and debris that kind of slide down so putting in these uh, you know making it kind of more dirt like instead of green grass uh, you know, just, just look up reference pictures for whatever it is you're trying to do and then just kind of mimic those. At least that, that's, it's really helped me um, if, if you're not doing it already. But, but yeah, like Pinterest is a good example as much as I hate that site. I think their UI design is terrible. <laughs> and I hate all the ads. I absolutely hate all the ads in that site. Um, but uh, Pinterest, Google Image Search, um, or you know DuckDuckGo, um, if, you, if you're concerned more about your privacy, obviously. But <laughs> nobody's heard of DuckDuckGo, um, so it's easier just to say Google Image Search. But anyway, kind of doing the same thing that we did over there in the uh, Timberwolf exhibit, kind of tucking in some snow here and there, and like the shadows. Uh, 
especially on the north side of the mountain here, it would, you know, throughout the year get less sunshine than like an east or west facing uh, rock face. Thought about dropping some ice, uh, put a little bit here and there. I don't really think you'd notice it a whole lot. Yeah, actually, you don't notice it because I deleted it, but... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like like the ice texture, it looks really really cool, but it's kind of like a hard texture to use. Like it, it feels a little too artificial almost. Um, I don't know. I'll try using it over in the uh, polar bear exhibit. Maybe it'll look better when it's next to snow and stuff. But it it, it just felt a little too artificial. Uh, you know, kind of when it's tucked into these environments, I guess. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. But yeah, just kind of doing the same thing over here, adding, adding snow to the uh, shadow ears, now kind of creating the peak of our mountain here. Again, kind of smoothing out this um, geological formation line, striation line. A little striation line, that sounds, that sounds scientific. Striation Ridge, maybe we'll call it that. Ooh, that, that sounds real fancy. <laughs> the Striation Ridge of the Rocky Mountain recreated rock face here. Oh, I'm, I'm making it worse. I should have stopped talking. <laughs> there were a couple good science words in there at first. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> So I made the top of this mountain a little bit more um, crumbly looking, again, because there's these cliff faces that I feel like this part of the mountain is kind of collapsing, and that's what would create these cliff faces to begin with, you know, part of the mountain shears away. Again, that's why we have a giant rock slide over there, um, is that this side of the mountain is eroding, um, therefore you're not going to, you're, you're still going to see the striations, but you're also going to see kind of like collapsed rock faces um, here and there. starting to take shape now. Um, this is getting closer to what the final uh, rock scape's going to look like. Able to remove some of those temporary fences. Go back in here and start dropping some more uh, snow down again because I want this to be snow capped. So this one's going to be a little bit heavier uh, snowed in. Heavier snowed in. Uh, that sounds right. Because, um, again, it's on the north side of the mountain here, so it's going to be uh, colder. It's going to... Or, sorry, not colder. It's going to have... Well, I mean, it would be colder because it's getting less sunlight. But since it's getting less sunlight, it's getting less of that solar radiation. The, the snow's not going to melt as rapidly as, like, the southern-facing uh, part of the mountain or the, you know, east-west sides of the mountain here. Plus, again, I wanted it to transition so we are more tundra here, and then we're going to swing over to more arctic. So by throwing in a whole lot of snow here, it's, it's going to try to sell that illusion that we're moving towards a colder biome. I don't know how I'm going to transition <laughs> from, <laughs> I'm thinking about now, I mean, we're going from like freezing cold to the Amazon. Um, it'll be an interesting transition. I'll have to see how we do this. <laughs> because if you remember from the uh, episode 14 and a half, we swing around this mountain area 
into the Arctic, and then we've got like Central and South America, where that uh, line is over in the far western part of the zoo, that, that path line out there. So that should be interesting. I didn't consider how I was going to transition. Bridge. We'll, we'll build a bridge. That's always that's always the answer. <laughs> yes, just 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 drop a bridge down, and then it'll be uh, yeah. So you cross the bridge, and you're in the tropics. It's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> ah, we'll make it work. It's all good. If not, we'll go we'll go work in Africa for a little while. So again, just heavy snow here, just kind of dropping these snow rocks in there to kind of create the illusion like there's still a lot of snow on this side of the mountain. Even here, like on the uh, eastern faces, because again, you get the morning sun, wouldn't be as strong, plus it'd be lower in the horizon, then you'd, as the sun kind of goes around the mountain here, this side would still have tons of snow just because it's not getting that strong you know midday sun yeah the texture on these snow rocks is is really nice Actually, I mean, all the rocks have really, really good textures, but these snow ones, like, they really sell themselves as being, like, uh, you know, compact sections of snow, not just a retextured rock, you know, so. Yeah, they've done, they've done a, like I've said a few times in, in this series, Frontier has done a really good job with their uh, art department here. It's... It's very, very sharp. So I'm just gonna take a look at the mountain here, seeing if there's any more rock work that rock work that needs to be done. Um, I'm pretty sure this is again towards the end of the rock work. We're gonna start working on the foliage here. <clears throat> lower part of this uh, enclosure, I wanted to have kind of more dense forest up here, just kind of, again, very small trees. It's snowed in most of the year, so the trees that are up here have a much shorter growing season, so you're just going to get little nubs. Um, I also wanted to tuck in a couple trees here and there, like little ones that may have you know started to grow back since this rock slide some little bushes here and there um, you know make it look like the forest is starting to come back I also had the idea um, I know these little willow bushes would grow more along the stream bed I had the idea of kind of tucking them here to make it look like there's a plant or tree or something growing up along the cliff face. They also have this one willow bush that's kind of like on a crooked branch and it's kind of like growing sideways so it was kind of perfect for, you know, I'll just tuck a little thing, you know, a little tree here like it's growing out of the side of the mountain because every now and again you'll see like these little trees that are um, <laughs> desperately trying to grow out the side of the mountain. Yeah, I think I went a little overboard with the willows over there on the left side. <laughs> Eventually go through and, and remove some of those. Uh, dropping down some caribou moss here. Um, again, I reasoned that with the snow melt and stuff, kind of in some of these more protected spots, there would be enough 
uh, moisture and enough sediment for them to be able to grow in. Uh, dropping in a lot of kind of short trees here because again I wanted to make sure the cliff face was the main feature here but I also wanted to kind of sell the illusion that down here as the river bends uh, it's calmer, it, it, it's more spread out, um, it, it's kind of a lower environment, uh, it can flood every now and again so that's going to create a lot of nice a lot of really nice soil for these trees to kind of grow in, but again, they're all kind of short because it, it could flood. So we're not going to have a lot of large old growth trees because it floods, it erodes the mountain, the mountain falls down on the trees, and you know they don't get to be very big. Um, <laughs> you know, mountain squishing trees is the number one cause of short trees in, in mountains. <laughs> no, not not at all. That is that is a completely false fact. <laughs> yeah, I think they were complaining about the, uh, the trees in here, but I said, you know, screw it. You guys can deal with it. Um, yeah, and then I get rid of those willows because the coverage was just way too much. Um didn't realize that they didn't like a whole lot of... I mean, I, I guess I should have realized that because I, I looked at their environment, but yeah, they didn't like a whole lot of, a lot of trees, so uh, kind of cleaned some of this up to make them a little bit happier on the, the foliage coverage, and then go through and pop a whole bunch more down, because that's what I do. <laughs> I like things being dense and lush and, and pretty looking. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to start dropping down uh, their feeders, their enrichment items, drop down some coolers, because they do want to be in a much colder environment than uh, where the uh, this zoo is located. Unfortunately, every time I kept dropping down some of these enrichment items, they kept uh, breaking my terraforming, so I kind of had to find where to drop these so that they didn't break my terraforming. And just kind of spraying them all throughout the exhibit to kind of give the animals reason to move here and there. I really wanted to put down the scratcher, or this uh, rubbing pillar just was not cooperating. I think I finally said, screw it, it's going there. <laughs> Dropping down some more rocks here and there. Again, with the ultimate goal of wanting to get rid of these temporary fences I dropped. I'd rather have it look like there's natural barriers than... And here's the wall to the exhibit. You know, don't don't pay attention to that. <laughs> Again, taking in some more snow here and there, just to kind of sell the illusion that uh, this area stays more snowed in. And I just noticed like all of my caretakers were. I guess they were delivering animals. That's why they were all on that side of the <laughs> on this side of the zoo. I just kind of panned out there, and there's like. I don't know, ten caretakers standing around. But that makes sense. They were they were dropping off animals, so and kind of creating just kind of a rocky slope here. Again, because I want to show off the uh, the animals. Um, like rugged off-road capabilities. <laughs> Jeep should make a make a car called called the Doll um, after the sheep. <laughs> I would. Well, actually, I'm never gonna buy a Jeep again. That's another story. Um, oh, I slapped my mic. Hopefully, that wasn't too loud. Um, 
I think it was. I see a huge peak on the on the uh, audio waveform there. I'll have to cut that out. <laughs> um, anyway, we're getting close to the end of the episode here. Uh, we'll close out with some cinematics as usual, and we'll finish up this exhibit in part two. So, thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one. <laughs>